and people are watching at the world for them probably good morning good night and good evening i'm illustrating a success story of a very very economically and socially challenged people of kerala the southern tip of india it is a story of jamia markas it is an ngo that created a renaissance and revolution in the field of education by and india and across the champion of this the revolution is none other than sheikh abu bin ahmed the grand mufti of india known to the arab world as abul aitam or father of in english called father of orphans so markas nola city is built to create advanced education facility for the orphans and destitute primarily higher education how we build this city amidst havoc created by covid and resulted in financial crisis this is what my presentation is and for making the city the first thing we did we intense research we did digging out the ancient wisdom of sustainability you can see that the city in 2012 in the small slide and in 23 the span of roughly around 7 to 8 years a rural area was completely transformed into an urban city complying with the un sdg without compromising environmental fragility this is what the city currently is the city is divided into six zones primarily it's an education hub then healthcare facilities the commerce agriculture living area and cultural zone education is the key you can see that 11 institute and 10 languages we are we are teaching in 10 different languages and 10 students from the 10 states are coming and attending the class in the markas nola city and we are reaching to 35 countries with various education facilities through our online platform called meem which is taking the education the basic level education to the uh, th across the 35 countries em employing almost 2000 plus tutors primarily ladies sitting at the comfort of their house and that they are teaching across the world and case studies we dig into the practices developed by the ancient civilization in the valley mesopotamian babylon you can see that picture of the indus valley civilization and what we find when we dig into they had much sophisticated and sustainable system than what we have today they have the very efficient water management they harness the earth gravity no pump no motors no electricity no carbon emission they have the advanced drainage system remarkable storage system the photograph which shows you it's a water tank built with the natural materials it stores the water and it allows the air to pass through to do two things to 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 cool the water plus aeration is required to maintain the quality of the water and irrigation canal system they had they took the agriculture into the arid regions and they ensured food security and urban stability this is the need of the hour food security become the challenge of the world an effective waste disposal system and they have the passive cooling and lighting system now we use solar as an intermediate process they use directly we don't understand we don't estimate the destruction we make by using we digging out the material used for making the solar panels and the batteries heavy destructions is happening at the environment side they use directly many of the things if you look into the the alhambra and all they, they harness the solar energy directly and they use maximum local and national materials and in the nola city we adopted as much as possible the wisdom we learned from the ancient civilization you see the the, the picture you see here this is our alif global school the idea is to inculcate the culture of sustainability from the classroom itself this was made you know that a 45 degree the bricks is made and it won't allow the rain water to pass through but it allow the light and and the air into the and ventilation natural lighting and natural ventilation you see 
we use the local and natural material. This is our world-class wellness center. I request everybody to come and enjoy our wellness center, which is, you see the, the reception itself. We kept the tiles made from the clay available in the city. And we, we were courageous enough to portray that in front of the reception and telling to the world that we mean the sustainability. This is locally made materials. And then we had, we designed water storage and maximum we are using the gravity to maintain the flow. This is our main water storage system, 35 million liters of water, primarily harvesting the rain and from the springs. And the nucleus of, of the city is what we call it, the Jamul Futu, other than the India's Grand Masjid. And somebody asked me, what, why it is possible to build such a big mosque in India? We got full support from the, both the government of India, central government, and from the state of Kerala, government of Kerala. They were very supportive of this project. Then, minimized air cutting, like in the Petra. Petra, they did not move the material from the, the civilization during that time, Ad or Zamud civilization, that the Stone Age civilization. They did not move the material from there to other, other, other areas. They did not use any transportation. They made their own dwelling place within that mountain itself, the Petra. Similarly, we minimize the earth cutting, different levels of the, the, the building is maintained from the first floor and the second floor we can, without, cut, without uh, removing any piece of the land. Then the best in the lot is we have the, the sewage treatment plant, toxic free, 75% of the water, is recycled and reused without any chemicals. And we fed this into the ponds created for storing this water where we are growing edible fishes to prove that there is no chemi chemical or toxic chemicals in it. The green space, we were, we were maintaining the green space elaboratively. We built the verticals and then we maximum utilize there's a green area for our food productions and, and then trees like bamboo and other things to get the enough oxygen to the city. You will be surprised. We took all the ancient civilization and ancient best practices. We, we, we did not create the mud houses, please mind it. We adopted the ancient wisdom, implemented as much as possible, and then we integrated technology into it to make city smart. Renewable energy side, we use solar systems, power systems. And we have wind turbines, innovative. This all we engage in startup to produce these innovative generating stations. We are almost successful in innovative flywheel turbines, which can promise you around 250 kilowatt without any fuel. And it's working fine. Some fine tuning and vibrations it's controlled that can be directly used in the city. And I'm, I'm very hopeful by 2030, the city, Marcus Nola city, will be completely reliable on, reliant on the renewable energy than the conventional and energy, uh, carbon emission technologies. Making city smart. The list you can see, I'm not going to elaborate it. The point that I'm going to stress here is all this product that are used for making the city smart is assembled there. We bring the components and we assemble these things there. Idea behind that is, you know that we have around 1,440 apartments, that many number of fridges, washing machines, air conditioners, who will maintain it. So we created a Hogger Technology Institute, sort of a home tech institute. We engaged ladies around the city train them to make, you know, we need thousands of thousands and thousands of LED bulbs. Every two years it has to be replaced. We engaged them, we taught them, we empowered them to make the, the, the required devices and appliances we need and maintain it. This is an, not only achieving the sustainability, but also ensuring that the nearby villages are getting empowered, the livelihood they're getting from this. The key to sustainability we have identified that is education. So Marcus Nola City is primarily for education. And then after doing, studying about the ancient wisdom, integrating the technology, we were not sure are we the right track. We benchmarked our, our achievements 
with respect to the best practices. In the, in the water recycling, we exceed the expectations of the world standards. In the energy side, we ex exceed the expectations of the International Energy Association. And when I came to the Geneva, I first looked at the what is the quality of air here. It is 43. In our city, it is 38, better than Geneva. And then we adopted the lead technologies. And as far as the UN urban forestry practice are concerned, we exceed their ex expectation green spaces in urban planning. In agriculture, we exceed the guidelines given by FAO. And the International Clean Transport Body tells that EV 60% emission reduction is possible, and we exceed that also. As far as the UN SDG is concerned, we comply with the almost seven UN SDG in all aspects. We hosted the climate summit, UN SDG 13. You see the MD of uh, Marcus Nola City in the picture. I would say he is a champion of sustainable practice and development. He insists no incinerator, no cutting of the trees, water should be used minimally. No light should be on after 10 o'clock. So for achieving the sustainability, we need champion. And our MD is a champion of sustainability. His instruction, we strictly followed. The result is we could build a sustainable green smart city. We are the part of uh, your ICCN network and we hosted the ninth General Assembly further to prove to the world that yes, we mean sustainability. In conclusion, Sustainability is deeply rooted in the history. By integrating these time-tested methods with modern technology, we are sure we can build cities that are resilient, efficient, and harmonious with nature. A rural area, one of the things which I want to stress here, many emerging economies, people are attending the conference. Many are suffering, struggling for the food security. I'm confident that rural area can be really transformed into urban. We can fill the gap between the rural and urban area and we can achieve SDG 11, sustainable community city and the communities, and we can contribute to the global sustainable development efforts. Therefore, Marcus Nola City, a city created for advanced education for the destitute and the orphans, promoted by the champion of the Abul Aitham or the father of or the father of orphans, standing as a testament to this philosophy, demonstrating that sustainable urban development is not only feasible but also essential for our future and the generations to come. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. First of all, I thank uh, I thank uh, WSD team headed by Dr. Alam. Marvelous job people bring doing bringing all the people across the world focusing on the sustainability and my team are sitting and watching and they supported for for making the city successful and my family they're eagerly watching my presentation with goosebumps and what's going to happen and i'm very thankful to them and thank you all for giving me this opportunity thank you very much thank you doctor for this timing presentation a very informative session linked with the cultural um context here as well. So um, we will move now to our fourth speaker, uh, Dr. Olivia Joseph. Uh, Dr. Olivia will talk um, about uh, how to improve health and well-being in line with SDG 2030 in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, Dr. Olivia, whenever you are ready, please make a start and thank you so much. Good morning, good afternoon, evening, and good night, just like my other colleague have said. Uh, it's a pleasure.